Okay, in this podcast we're going to make the Lucians, and again we're going to look at what it takes to do this using for uh, purposes of uh, quantitative analysis where my precision is important. So first, let's take a look at the whole idea of behind dilutions. So if I have, let's say, 100 milliliters of one molar copper sulfate solution, and here I have it in the beaker, and I take that solution and I add a bunch of water to it, distilled water, and I end up with this. I end up with one liter, now instead of 100 milliliters, and I have 0.1 molar copper sulfate. So which is more concentrated? Well, obviously, this one is more concentrated. It's got more solid per volume. And you can actually see it's darker here than it is here. But which of them has, which beaker contains more copper sulfate, more moles of copper sulfate? Well, in fact, they are equal, equal number of moles. And so when I take this beaker that has this in it and I add water, I'm not removing any of that solid. So the number of copper plus 2 and sulfate minus 2 ions that were there before I added the water is still there. And if you remember, the formula for molarity is molarity is moles over liters. Okay? So if I um, rearrange that, I get molar uh, moles is equal to molarity times liters. So if I take 0.1 liters times 1 molar, I get 0.1 moles. And if I take 1 liter times 0.1, I get 0.1 moles. So they both have 0.1 moles. Okay, So the whole idea is that if the moles of the concentrated, and I'm talking about moles of the solute, is equal to the moles dilute, then if I use that formula where n equals m times v, this is equal to moles, this is equal to moles, so I have this dilution formula M1V1 equals M2V2, so it's known as the dilution formula, and comes in very handy. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply it. So let's say I'm preparing 100 milliliters of a 0.10 molar HCl solution, solution, and I'm using a 5 molar stock solution. Now, when I say stock solution, I'm, I'm talking about something that's in the stock room that is um, typically more pretty concentrated and I always have a choice you know I can make I can generally make a solution from solid or I can make it from um, a concentrated solution that already exists and it's usually easier to make it from a stock solution than it is from a solid okay so um, the first thing we have to do is determine how much of the stock solution we need to use so I can rearrange, so I'm trying to find what is my volume of my stock solution, and it doesn't matter whether this is my concentrated and this is my dilute, or this is my dilute and this is my concentrated, as long as the, they're on the same side, right? If this is concentrated, this is dilute. So if I rearrange my equation to so solve for volume, it's going to be M1V1 over M2, or 0.1 molar times 100 milliliters, divide by 5 molar is going to equal 2 milliliters of 5.0 um, molar HCl. Now you might say, oh that doesn't seem right, how can you do this with milliliters instead of liters? And the answer is because if I'm, uh, I've got uh, milliliters and milliliters on both sides of this equation, if I were to change this to liters, I'd be milliliters over a thousand on both sides. And as you can see, that you can cancel out the thousand and you can still use milliliters. So the, the rule is when you use an M1V1, the volume units can be anything, any volume units, as long as they are the same on both sides. Okay. Now we did say that we're making an HCl solution. Now there are, um, if there are strong acids or strong bases, Dissolving those or diluting those is very exothermic. So when we do that, there's a safety hazard. If I were to take um, acid and add water to it, that water 
has a tremendous heat capacity and it picks up that heat, the little bit that I that first goes in there and it can splatter and hit you in the face or hit you in the neck or so there's a rule that says A A A always add acid. So you want to put the water in first when you're making a solution of a an acid strong acid or a strong base. Okay? So always add the acid. Okay. So we're going to take that stock solution and we're going to um, pipette some of it. Now there's two different types of pipettes that we have, of these dispensing pipettes. Let's say I wanted a 10 milliliter pipette. This top one has only one line on it and the line is a 10.00 milliliter line. Now this pipette has um, a bunch of gradations so I can use it when I'm measuring out um, one, two, three, four, up to ten milliliters. And when I have one of these, I always have to look at what do I have down here, because some of these have my ten. My ten is going to be here, which means I stop when I get to that line. When I'm dispensing it into my container, I stop at that line. Whereas others, like this one, the nine. This is nine, and what that implies is that the tip is ten. So therefore, in that one, I have to empty the entire tip. So you always got to watch for what kind of tip do I have. Okay. All right, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to take your stock solution, and you're going to pipe at some amount of that that you have calculated. And you're going to put it into a, a flask that you're going to put your dilute solution in. Now, remember, if, this is, if I'm doing this for a strong acid or a strong base, I'm going to put a bunch of that water in first and then I'm going to add my stock solution, okay? If I'm just making a dilution from a standard um, solution and it's not a strong acid or a strong base, I can go ahead and put that stock solution in first and then I'm going to fill up to the line using my wash bottle or my flask depending on how much or my beaker depending on how much water I'm using all the way to the line, okay? It's important then that I mix. So either I have a stopper that I can put on my volumetric flask, or sometimes I need to stretch a piece of parafilm over the top and then put my thumb on that parafilm and, and shake it back and forth. You can also use a um, magnetic stirrer, right? And those work really nicely. Okay, so that's going to do it for us.